It is time to ignite those dreams of our young people and empower the youth to bring their visions to life. Now we are partnering with the After School Graduate Development Center on the Ignite Enterprise Project to provide practical tools to teach young people how to build businesses and to create employment for others. In Lagos, the possibilities are endless. Lagos State, in partnership with AGDC, presents Ignite. Powered by First Bank and supported by Bank of Industry. The American company, Enron, was one of the most respected and most powerful energy generating companies in the world. They made huge profits and were achieving phenomenal results. Everything seemed great on the surface until it all came crashing down. The problem? Lack of ethics. Ethics and business do not always seem to go hand in hand, or so most people think. But unethical business practices eventually affect the bottom line if they don't destroy the business totally. Today, we're taking on a very tough topic, especially for our environment. We're going to be talking about bribery, corruption, inflated invoicing, under-invoicing, and other unethical business behavior. This is Ignite, and my name is Ibukun Awoshika. Welcome. From the great city of Lagos, it's another inspiring episode of Ignite. Practical business advice taking you from dreams to reality. Ignite, from dreams to reality. What is ethics? A famous word, but it means different things to different people. But it generally boils down to a basic sense of societal right and wrong. And that can change as you move from one society to another. Within the business context, it involves making decisions that align with that sense of right and wrong as well as with the laws of the land in which you operate. It's not only bribery and corruption. It's not restricted only to the exchange of money. Ethics revolves around all aspects of business practices, from startup to the day-to-day -day running of the largest businesses in the world. A business cannot claim to be ethical if it ignores the unethical practices of its suppliers, its workers, and its entire value chain. I'd like to know what you think about ethics. How, what does the word mean to you beyond what I've explained that it means? Because your perspective of what it is affects the way you react or you respond to it. And how liable do you think you are or how accountable do you think you are to that word or the meaning of it to you? Any takers? I believe ethics is a reflection of my upbringing, my value system. So I could have good ethics and bad ethics, but it reflects how I was brought up and what I place value on. Now when it comes to business, it affects how I relate to people in general and what I hold in high esteem. Okay. What business are you in? Fashion design. Fashion design. Okay, in, in terms of fashion, your fashion business, what are the practices around you that you consider unethical or the practices around you that challenge you the most? When it comes to pricing, I, I, I found out that sometimes you charge a high amount, but the quality of what you're producing is below that amount that you have charged. So for me, Ethics means if I'm charging a high price, then I should be able to meet up to the standard and make sure that what I'm producing is also of a high quality. Okay, so unfair pricing relative to value for you is an ethical challenge in your business or in your industry. Okay, that's one. My name is Hayobami. 
I feel treat people the way you like to be treated. That's treating people right in general. For you, that's ethics. Yeah, but you see, it's so general okay. that it, 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 I want cogent things. What business are you in? Okay, I'm a sales rep. In your work as a sales rep in an insurance company, what are the ethical issues that challenge you? Okay, for example, now, basically, we are in the business to make sales. And at times, we have the challenges of hiding some fruit so that we can actually sell better. But to me... You, you hide what? As a... Because people don't believe in insurance so much in Nigeria. So some sales rep actually going about and hiding some truth, not telling the... For example, now, in insurance, there's something known as excess. If you take an insurance policy, if there's... In terms of... In, uh, in case of claims, your insurance company will not pay 100%. They'll pay 70%. They'll pay you 70%. 70 not 100%. The 30% is known as excess. But some, oh, some sales reps will hide the truth from their customers. They won't tell them. So when is now time to oh, pay claims? Because now they'll say, no, that's not what you guys promised me. You promised to pay me 100% and all that. So it's challenging though because you actually lose some customers by telling them the truth. But if it's just very ethical, you telling them the truth. Okay. So, in the insurance business, when the sales reps or whoever is in charge doesn't tell you the truth or they hide information or it's called under disclosure of what is the truth, generally, it's in the document. But I don't know many people that actually read insurance documents because normally, the writings are tiny, maybe deliberately, so that you won't bother to read it. So to a large extent, you've got to trust the man that is trying to sell it to you. So I let me say something to that. Not if we don't, not if they actually, not if we hide those words, but because Nigerians don't like reading, we actually stated there, and there's actually a rule that, okay, if I need to take a policy and you don't like it, I actually return it back to us in less than a month. But most Nigerians won't actually go through the document. At the end of the last I said, eh, insurance, the last I begin one plot and all that. But it's okay, but like let that. me take you up there. You're a good case study. Okay. And I'll explain why. She's brought out a fundamental issue. Now, it's written in the letter, no doubt. So legally, the insurance company has done its work. But operationally, the insurance agent knows that that customer is not going to read that fine letter. And knowing that, he pretends not to know. And therefore, in trying to make the sale, he does not declare that as part of the information he brings up. What do you consider that? Is that ethical or unethical? Why? Because there's what? There's what? Deception. Is there deception? You see, you are the agent and you've agreed with us that there's deception. Now, see, the important thing, the important thing in checking what you do, sometimes to determine whether they're ethical or not, is your intention. Because the intention for not drawing the attention of the client to the fact that when you have a claim for this particular type of policy, we will, and it's not for all policies, that you only do 70%. We only pay 70% of the value, of the insured value, right? The intention for not disclosing is not to put you off from buying. So you deliberately under-inform, nor do you say, have you read? The fundamental issue to take away is, is a function of your intention. Because always, whether the customer knows or not, if you know and you deliberately mislead or hide the truth, even if you're legally covered. Because sometimes you can use the law as your covering for doing what you do wrong. But don't forget, you might win legally, but you have lost more. Because at the end of every unethical action is a possible major loss, which is beyond money. 
It's about you as a person. And it will be interpreted and translated to other parts of your life. Because for every time that person sees you, if he can't trust you in selling him an insurance policy, the day you go to him to do business together, he won't trust you. Because you say, oh, you, you that you sold me insurance policy and you didn't tell me the truth. Ah, oh, I can't do partnership with you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Ignite from dreams to reality. What do I like? I like what I do. I like going on holiday with my family. And I like my car. I like gadgets. And I like my bank. If your bank were us, you would like us too. Since 1894, we have built a strong and stable financial institution based on insightful local know-how, global reach, and a commitment to deliver to you world-class innovative solutions. First Bank, truly the first. Ignite from dreams to reality. We learned that we should be ethical, being just and fair in whatsoever we are doing. First of all, I'll work towards building my story. I'll make a story for myself, a sincere story, and doing my business with ethics because it will help my business go a long way. So far, I have learned ethics, doing business the right way, doing the business in God's way. If you want to start up your business, you have to base it on business ethics. That you have to make sure that you gain the, uh, your customer's trust. I've come to realize that Unethical business ethic uh, results into the loss of business relationship. I've learned that you should be fair and you should apply ethics in your business. In whatever you do, you should be fair in your pricing. As whatever you, you as in the things you steal from will come back to you. Ignite from dreams to reality. More unethical opinions. What ethic means to me is my core value. What stands me out amongst the crowd? I'm into diesel supply. Into uh, what supply? Diesel supplies. Ah, that's, that's a very good area to check. And in my business, most of my colleagues, when we go for supply, because the LPO that comes out of the company, normally it's not favorable. To normally? The, it's not normally favorable to us at times. Maybe the market price is at 132 naira. But because the IPO comes out at 125. So what other people do is they add kerosene. They add what? Kerosene, as in DPK. Okay. They add kerosene to the to, diesel. To the diesel. So because kerosene sells at a lower price. So okay. they just mix them. They increase the volume. If you are meant to supply 33,000 liters, yeah. they might just buy maybe 28,000 liters. Then add 5,000 liters of kerosene to it. So the margin... Maybe at 132 for AGO, 80 naira for Kerosene. DPK. So the 50 50 naira margin, that is their own gain. Okay. So as a business, I just believe it is not right. Because I have a goal to take my own business higher. So someday that I will contract that aspect of people to supply my plant. And mixing those products has an effect on your plant. Who we'll cost you around 3.5 million to get one? So I don't want people to do that to me in the near future. Though I might not be able to pre uh, protect that in the near future, but I don't want to do it. That's my ethics. Okay. Personally for you, that's what you do. Okay. Now, let, let, let's take a look at what he said. See, a lot of people think that anything is fair and is right as long as you make money from it. But let's look at the costs of mixing kerosene with diesel. The guy who does it will make money, but the guy who has bought in trust, having paid supposedly for 33,000 liters of diesel, now has diesel and kerosene. And his generator is at risk because you're feeding it with the wrong material. Ultimately, the gain, the cost to the man is higher than the gain to the one that adulterated. And what he forgets is that somehow it can be found out. 
and the day he's found out, he's lost that business. What happens to a man like that is he will continue to look for new customers because he will continue to lose customers over time. Now, the other things I know they do in your industry is because between the pump and the tank, I can't measure. They bring the tanker to your factory or to your company. They put the pump in. The only man that knows if he has sold you the correct volume is the dealer. And half the time, you don't get it. Now, all that needs to happen is that one ethical guy asks for an opportunity to sell to me. And I ask him that, okay, just to make you happy, let's buy this batch from you and we'll continue with our normal supplier who has been cheating us but we haven't realized. And then we buy the same volume and we find out that it lasts two weeks longer than the last one. Obviously, we will conclude that we've been cheated. Someone's been cheating us all along. What happens? We lose the business. I'm trying to bring out some issues from the things we're going to discuss. Because, see, the main place to start when it comes to our ethics in business is who you are. What is your own value system? What do you consider dear to you? Is money the ultimate thing in your life? Or have you found that your family name and integrity has served you well? Because as the child of an honorable man, every time you got somewhere, someone said, ah, that's who your father is. Ah, oh, he's a good man. And they begin to cite examples. Your father might not be rich. He might be comfortable or average. But when he goes to sleep at night, he sleeps well. Because he's not afraid. He knows he has not attempted to mix another man's value with his. You must decide who you are. Don't give me the excuse of this is how it is done. By who? Because when it comes to your ethics, it's a one-man business. It's a personal decision that you must have the courage to stand with. It's a choice that you make. And the totality of your life is an addition of the choices that you make every day. Some years back, customs just woke up and decided to compile from manifest of ships that had come into the country in the last 10 years. And they made a list of all the containers that had come through the ports that were not cleared legally or correctly. And they published in the newspapers names of companies like you could not even imagine. From multinationals to small companies. And worse still, they shut the port. No containers could come out. Every importer had to go to the port. They had task force teams. You will go to the port. You will file the papers for re-evaluation of your container. 